five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I have the uh, camera because we do these podcasts. And, and a lot of times we, do, we have guests in the studio. So we have a camera. And I have the camera aimed out the window at that beautiful, that beautiful Thursday we're having here in, in Central Florida. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It nice? We want to keep it that way, right? We want to keep yeah. everything beautiful, right? Mm-hmm. So does everybody. Everybody in the world wants to keep their area of the, of the world beautiful, right? Nobody, nobody wants their area to be all sooty and dirty, right? No. And, and, uh, and yet we are all contributing to the dirtying of the world. I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty. I'm just as guilty as anybody. I drive a car too, you know. But when you hear about, when you hear about, I've often wondered, like, what happens if I I go in a time machine and I I, I arrive a a thousand years from now, and I look around and that beautiful scene I'm looking at out the window here is uh, is gone. It's a mess. Uh The trees are dead. Everything's a mess. And then I say, oh my gosh, who did this? And then the voice over my shoulder says, "Well, you helped." to do this, right? Yes. So, I'm not I'm not trying to be preachy. I'm just trying to figure out a way how can we have the lifestyle that we've come to know and at the same time keep this world beautiful or maybe even turn back the clock as far as that goes and make it even more beautiful. We went to um the uh the aquarium down in uh where were we? Tampa? Tampa. The Florida Aquarium. And you know, they don't have dolphins in captivity. Right? Yeah, they don't. You know what they do instead? They take you on a boat and you go out and you see the dolphins in the in the in their actual <laughs> where they actually live. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. I'm sure the people at SeaWorld are jealous because they I bet you those dolphins are jealous and it's just Yeah. I don't know. They seem too they smart to be cl- cl- closed down like <laughs> Kristen Miller is on the phone. I have no idea if I'm talking about anything. Along her line, it looks like I am. Uh, She is the conservation director of the Alaska Wilderness League. And uh, she's talking to us about some drilling advances in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, uh, setting up precedents for offshore drilling. Uh, We have that issue right here in Florida. And um, we have guests who say it's not not going to be a problem. And we have other guests who say, yeah, this could be bad news. So it's like we do a radio show. Uh, maybe you fix bicycles, or, or maybe you paint pictures, or maybe you're a house builder. We don't study these things. We just have to listen to people who have studied them mm-hmm. and try to figure out where we stand. Kristen Miller. Good morning, Kristen. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Washington, D.C., and it's very beautiful here today, too. So we're all very lucky. It is beautiful in Washington, yeah, and, and, and we wanted to stay that way, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So how do we maintain uh, the lifestyle? How do we, I mean, is electric cars the answer? Is solar cells the answer? What is the answer? Yeah, I think we all can contribute uh, to having a cleaner and safer and um, uh, a more sustainable energy future. Uh, and it includes clean cars. It includes driving less. It includes um, increasing how far our cars can drive on a gallon of gas. Um, And it includes also weighing into your members of Congress and letting them know that that's what you want, that you want to see a future in which we're not dependent on fossil fuels, we're not dependent on oil, but that we want to see something that's safe and sustainable for our children so that we can live the lives that we want to live, but also know that we're going to leave the earth uh, for our children to enjoy the same that we were able to. Yeah, I'm with you, Kristen. I I just wonder if money doesn't speak louder than emotion. Sometimes it does, sometimes yeah. it does, and that's why we really encourage people to weigh in with their members of Congress because, and with their administration because we are a democracy and it's the people of America weighing in and letting our government know what we want that's going to yeah. change things it, long down the road. And again, I don't mean to sound naive, but I am. So with, the, with that little disclaimer right there, is it possible to speak their language? Like, is it possible to say, look... The the oil that we drill is finite. It will end. Will we will run out eventually, and we are going to need that for more than fuel. We're going to need it for plastics and for pharmaceuticals, etc. Um, maybe this is a good time to start making money. That's their language right there, with an alternative so that we can re- conserve that those things we drill out of the ground for those other things. Absolutely, and that's what we do at Alaska Wilderness League. Um, A lot of what we focus on is looking at the areas that they are targeting for oil and telling the story of those areas. You know, Alaska is far away from Florida, 
it's very connected to Florida in many ways. And we tell the stories of these public lands, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in Florida, which is one of our nation's most amazing, iconic, and biologically diverse pieces of public land, um, is an area that Americans have cared about for decades, a half a century, and have fought to protect for half a century. And the protections that the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge sees is going to be the same protections that the areas in Florida that people want to see protected are going to see. And all of these areas are interconnected and all of this work is interconnected. And so uh, one thing that we do is make sure people understand um, which areas we shouldn't be going into for oil and gas development and which areas we should be protecting mm-hmm. and what other options are out there. And uh, that's just not the uh, um, land and the water and the animals that are being that that need to be protected it's the people and their work as well we were told that there are 19 million acres yep yeah so the arctic national wildlife refuge is 19 million acres it's in the corner of northeast alaska wow. and it's this is amazing wildlife refuge it was first set aside for protection in 1960 and it's been fought over ever since unfortunately last year it was snuck in as a rider to the giant tax bill that many of your listeners probably know about. There was a little rider in there that opened this amazing wildlife refuge up for oil and gas development. It had nothing to do with tax. It had just to do with um, the political situation at the time, and it's very unfortunate, and we want to make sure that that gets overturned. Um, So just to tell you a little bit about the refuge, it's it's really an amazing piece of public land. It has these giant, majestic mountains that slope down into the Arctic Ocean. It's above the Arctic Circle. Oh, wow. So I want to see that. Yeah, the rivers flow actually north into the Arctic Ocean. And because the mountains are so close to the ocean, it sets up this amazing eco- ecological area that's home to polar bears that den in the winter, musk oxen, which are these historic creatures that live there all year round, wolves, 200 species of birds go there uh, from all over the world, from every state, including Florida. And it also hosts an amazing um, migration of a caribou herd called the porcupine caribou herd. And one of the reasons why the porcupine caribou herd is so amazing is that they do the, the largest land migration uh, in Northern America every single year, they go into Canada, they go south into Alaska, and then they come up and they give birth on the coastal plain of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Wow. And the air- area has sustained them for thousands and thousands of years. Ha- have you spent a lot of time there? I've been there. Um, it's very far away and it's very hard to get to, but I have gotten to visit it and it's it's really life-changing. Oh my um, gosh. There's pretty much nowhere else um, that it, in the United States that you can go to. Um, and another thing is that this porcupine caribou herd sustains the, uh, an, uh, an Athabascan Gwich'in native tribe that has also lived upon the migration route of the porcupine caribou herd for thousands of years. The Gwich'in people still live there today. They still live in 13 villages along the migration route of the porcupine caribou herd, and they still live their traditional way of life, relying on this caribou herd for subsistence. Is that right? Do you know, we uh, we speak to people, as I mentioned in the intro, who want to convince us that they're, they're, nothing's going to be harmed, and then we have people like yourself who say, you know, things might be harmed. And, and I, I try to be respectful and listen to both, and I don't know. I mean, I just work at a radio station. But you know what we did one time we called barrow alaska and we got this lady on the phone who was part of uh, a group up there but i mean she lives there she's a, an indigenous person yeah. I, I hope that's the right way to say that In- inuit inuit yes thank yes. you and so we actually had her talk to us about this and we said so tell us what's really going on and she said their way of life is changing. She said uh, the the water that used to be iced over isn't iced over anymore. Um, a lot of the wildlife that used to be there is not there anymore. And and so and I, I'm probably stumbling because it's been so long since we spoke to her. But the one thing we took away from that makes to your point, I think, is that the people who actually live there, who earn a living or make a living there. Um, are gra- are being greatly affected by something we're told isn't affecting anybody. That's true, yeah. The effects of climate change on the lands and the villages in northern Alaska is quite dramatic. Alaska is actually warming at 
twice the rate of the rest of the country. And so they're seeing the real world effects in very short periods of time with, like, as you said, the um, ice cap is melting, which means it changes the migration route of the animals that they rely on from the ocean. Um, the ecology is changing, so it changes the migration route of the land they re rely of the animals that they rely on on the land. And these people have lived this lifestyle for thousands of years, and they want to sustain their way of life. They want to live in their villages, and they want to rely on these animals yeah. and pass their traditions on to their children. Do you know, as humans, we've made mistakes throughout our entire history, and it always seems to be that we make a mistake, and then somebody points it out, and then we correct it. A good example would be when a, when a species is almost extinct, and, and then we say, wait a minute, we're, these things aren't going to be around anymore. Uh, uh, I, th I think the alligator might be one example. I, I think that one was endangered for a while. And, and uh, I think the manatee is one that's making a comeback. But it, it's, it's the effort of people who raised the red flag and then the response of the rest of us that makes that difference. So I'm hoping that same thing happens with this. We do, too. We do, too. You know, this was a very unfortunate provision that happened last year. It happened without, not, without the American public fully understanding it. It was slipped into a bill that it shouldn't have been in related to tax, um, and it was done so that they could avoid full and fair debate. This issue has been debated in Congress actually Back. for 30 years, and it's been protected, you know, vote after vote after vote for 30 years because of the overwhelming support of the American people. And the overwhelming support of the American people is still there. And so our job is to overturn what they did and to make sure that these protections are restored. For that, the is, that is your job. You know what my job is in part? My job is to, is to point out that that should be illegal. It, not, it, it should be illegal to have a bill that is 30,000 pages long or whatever that has embedded in it something that has nothing to do with what the title implies or what, yes. we're, or what we're told it's about. That should be, I, I can't believe we don't have legislators standing up and saying, look, from now on, one bill, one topic, easy to understand. It, it, right. it makes no sense. It should be illegal to embed something that has nothing to do with the primary thing we're voting on or they are voting on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we have worked with our members of Congress and our congressional champions, and there has been a bill introduced in the House to overturn what they did in the tax bill. We hope to see one soon in the Senate. And so for everybody that's listening, weigh in with your members of Congress and tell them that you support overturning what happened uh, with the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. And a bit besides the animals, while, while they're uh, um, uh, doing this, the uh, government had retroactively made oil and gas leasing one of the purposes of the Arctic Refuge. Yep, and that is a precedent that affects every state and everybody across the country. Wildlife refuges are set aside for a certain set of purposes, usually purposes relating to protecting wildlife, protecting endangered species, protecting plant life. And to retroactively go backwards and say one purpose of a refuge is now oil and gas development means it really uh, um, erodes the whole foundation of the National Wildlife Refuge system. And National Wildlife Refuge is, are the way that Americans can go out and see public lands just right in their backyard. These are some of the most important places for people to get solitude and recreation. And if we start eroding those protections, you know, we're going to have very few of these public spaces left. So um, we started this conversation by talking about uh, quality of life and lifestyles and, and all of that. And how are we going to maintain that if we don't continue doing it the way we've been doing it? Well, here in Central Florida, I, I had to go to the, the Internet because I couldn't remember. I didn't, I didn't want to paraphrase. I wanted to read it to you if you don't mind. This is the Orlando Sentinel, and it's about what Disney World is doing. To, to not only to make a difference, but also to demonstrate some kind of leadership, maybe. I don't know if you're going to agree with us or not. This is the article in the Orlando Sentinel from February 20th of this year. Disney World will soon be connected to a new solar farm along State Road 429, 10 times larger than the existing, existing Hidden Mickey solar farm near Epcot. Reedy Creek Improvement District signed an agreement and easement with Miami-based Origis Energy to build the facility near ponds that are just east of the Toll Beltway and just west of Disney's Magnolia and Palm Golf Courses. I know this is areas you're not familiar with, but our listeners know these areas. Uh, anyway, it goes on to say the facility will provide renewable solar power to the Reedy Creek Improvement District and ultimately to Disney World. The complex will sprawl across 270 acres 
on the western edge of Disney's property with 518,000 solar panel modules. It's expected to create 300 jobs for creation, uh, for construction, rather. Um, let me jump to the to the gist of this here. Um, anyway, it's it's going to be able to power two of their four theme parks and, and 1,000 homes that are also in the Reedy Creek, whatever that's called, the Reedy Creek District area, yes. whatever that area is called. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. That is amazing. And it, what's really great is to see these corporations stepped up and, and take steps towards true corporate responsibility um, when it relates to the environment. We're seeing this more and more. To hear that about Disney is amazing. And you can imagine it's that that it's that many fossil fuels that they're replacing by doing that. It's, and it's that many. Right. Um, yep. Uh, and, you know, beyond that, there's companies all over the world. It, for the Arctic Refuge, actually, just uh, a couple weeks ago, um, one point, or, I'm sorry, two point six trillion dollars worth of it, um, uh, of investors, different companies and investors and pension funds wrote a letter uh, to various companies saying that they should not invest in drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge because they don't understand how it can contribute to a sustainable future. So you're seeing this more and more. The companies are looking into the future and taking steps that um, hold themselves ac- accountable for our nation's environmental future. And it's really, it's, it's, it's heartwarming and it, it, it tells a great story of, um, about our future. And you, it seems like you have uh, scientists and uh, biologists on your side also. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this is one of the most biologically rich uh, pieces of public land, not only in Alaska, not only in our country, but probably in the world. Um, and, and there's a long list of scientific research that shows how important this area is, not just for Alaska, but for um, all across the United States, not just because of the birds. Uh, I, I think in Florida, the Paragon falcon. I don't know how many of your listeners are birders, but that's a bird that comes from Florida and flies all the way to the Arctic Refuge to nest each year. Isn't that amazing, oh Isn't that, amazing that they fly that whole thing? Yeah. Wow. I should, and that is, it's I, not only the birds, but you know the, the, the drilling, which affects the ice caps and affects in, increases global warming, will affect the coastline in Florida. So this is all interrelated, and we need to look at it as all one issue that need, we need to work on together. And, and here's what I say to everybody who doesn't believe that. I say this, that, okay, you don't have to believe it. All you have to do is land in L.A., Look out the window. You have to land in the daytime. You don't see it at night. But look out the window in the daytime, and you will see a dome of smog. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay? And if it's in L.A., it's in New York, except it blows out to sea. But it's still there. If it's in New York and L.A., it's in Chicago. It's in Miami. It's in Orlando. And and the the, the thing is this, that it, whether you agree or disagree with global warming, global, global whatever, rising seas, whether you agree or disagree, you can't argue the fact that we have to do something to clean up the environment. That's an easy one to see, to me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And when it comes to oil and gas development, those kind of effects are happen right on the ground with the development. Up in Alaska, there are areas that are being developed, and the pollution and air pollution resulting from the development and that already exists on the north slope of Alaska, which is the northern part of Alaska, is as bad as it is in Washington, D.C. So that's yes. the kind of industrialization that we're talking about for these areas that right now exist as they did a million years ago. And yet when when the uh, tourists go up there on their cruises for the Alaskan tours, they're not seeing any of that. They're seeing the beautiful part, so they're kind of being jaded that there is an emerging problem there, that this beauty might be gone. Absolutely. Yeah, northern Alaska is very far away from southeastern Alaska where cruises go, and then folks that go on cruises see the Tongass National Forest, which is another amazing um, piece of public land that is shared by all Americans. Um, but Alaska is a very big state, and there's a lot happening there, um, and it's far from one place to another. So just if I could add something to the Disney story, those those solar cells that I was talking to you about will be up and running before the end of this year. That's pretty amazing, right? Amazing. The company that they're using, Origis, O-R-I-G-I-S, they're working with power companies such as the Southern Company, Pacific Corporation, Idaho Power, South Mississippi Electric Power Association, and the city of Tallahassee. That's the capital of the state. So even uh, even the governments are getting in on this. And you know, speaking the language, talking about speaking the language, I think... Guess what they're going to be doing? They're going to be making money. 
So you know how Kmart closed and, and Amazon is thriving? Mm-hmm. Well, that same thing's going to happen. Origis is going to be the new Exxon. And Exxon is going to be sticking their thumb in the air saying, what happened? Right? Absolutely. In the Absolutely. air, by the way. I said in the air. <laughs> yeah. And is that what you're doing right now in uh, Washington, D.C.? Are you lobbying Congress? Um, yes, we're working with congressional champions. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a forum this week dedicated to the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge where members of Congress came together to discuss issues related to it. Um, and, and then a bill was introduced this week in the House. Uh, it, the number is HR 5911. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a bill that we are going to start introducing to members of Congress, and we're going to do a lot of lobbying, and we're going to ask citizens to call their members of Congress, and, and we're going to work as hard as we can until this is passed. So help us out. Um, give us some uh, contact information or a website or something like that, Kristen, if you could. Sure. Um, you can go to our website. It's www.alaskawild.org. And if you find a link that says Take Action, it'll tell you exactly what's going on in Congress. You can find out what's going on related to the issue, and then you can... Um, find a link that will directly allow you to send a comment to your member of Congress. And they're very tight communities up there. My mother's friend, uh, when she was married up there, they raised nine children, and there were a few of the children that stayed up there for whatever profession they had, and she moved down here to Florida, but she said that they're even concerned, too, in the uh, cities. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, the population of Alaska is actually the same as Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. So it's a very small population for a very, very big state. And so it's really kind of like a small town, despite how big it is. And there's a lot of people up there that we work with that are very concerned, a lot of people that care a lot about protecting Alaska. Uh, Kristen, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, it's not easy, and, and you're up against people who are very, very sly and and, uh, and have no problem slipping a bill into a thousand-page document to, to get their way. Uh, that really needs to be outlawed. Um, Kristen, thank you for the work you're doing and for making this a better place. Thank you so much. All right. You are welcome. We'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. Dairy Queen again to tell you about what's hot and what's not. Dairy Queen has some of the best char-grilled chicken breasts on earth, as well as their chicken breast salad. And the burgers are exceptional. Cooked on a real grill for the best flavor and less fat. And for dessert, blizzards are unequal. So personally, banana split is my all-time favorite. Dairy Queen Silver Springs, where we always treat you like kings and queens. Tired of looking at stained carpets, dirty tile, or grout? Call Silverback Restoration. 414-5312. Make your flooring look great again. Stains, pet odors, allergies. Call Silverback Restoration. 414-5312. From serving our country to serving our community. Silverback Restoration. 414-5312. Residential and commercial. Their work is guaranteed along with your satisfaction. Check their website, silverbackrestoration.com. Hey, sweetheart, you look upset. I just don't know how we're going to handle everything coming up these next few weeks. Graduation, Father's Day, Natalie's wedding. Tell you what, make a list of all the events and what you want to serve. Then just call Honey Baked Ham at 861-0011. They'll prepare everything to perfection and they'll even deliver. Where are they? I may just go by. 2709 Southwest 27th Avenue, just behind Best Buy. I'm going to use Honey Baked Ham for everything. Honey Baked Ham, making every day a special occasion. Bob Wines Camellia Gardens is pulling out all the stops for its gala pre-Memorial Day sale. Just look anywhere in this huge five and a half acre store for hundreds of truly outstanding buys for your yard or garden. A few examples like fruit plants and fruit trees, starting with blueberries and grapes as low as $9.99 or figs, guavas, bananas, starting at $14.99. Fruit trees include peach, apple, plum, pear, nectarine, mulberry, and more. You get two for $99. And don't forget that azalea sale. Get six semi-dwarf ever-blooming azaleas for only $35.99. Plus, very nice three-inch cactus and other succulents start at just $4.99. Check.
check the ad or go to bobwineschameleogardens.net for a big long list of all the pre-memorial specials. They're open daily till 4.30, Saturdays till 3. Southeast 38th Street, Ocala, the same blooming place since 1952. One of the best things about living in beautiful Central Florida is that we get to have a garden all year long. Spend some time on Tuesday mornings in the garden with Carol Ann Baldwin right here on WOCA The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. President Trump has canceled his meeting with the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, citing what he calls tremendous anger and open hostility from the North Koreans in a recent statement. Presumably he's talking about the one referring to Vice President Pence as a political dummy. This meeting was supposed to be on June 12th. It's two weeks from next Wednesday in Singapore. The president says in a letter to Kim, he looks forward to meeting him someday, calling this missed opportunity a truly sad moment in history. He's also thanking the North Korean leader, though, for recently releasing three American prisoners. And President Trump's considering new tariffs up to 25 percent on auto imports. Mr. Trump says core industries such as automobiles and auto.